Get me. From Studio A in Arcata, behind the Redwood Curtain, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast, soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcast. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's this episode's host from up the coast, the man who puts the X in Xbox and the tie on antisocial... Comedy Soundcast Soundcaster, Tyson Saner. Saner. Insaner. 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 Saluton, estes me, Tyson Saner. Welcome to episode 256 of Succotash. For those of you who are new here, thank you for choosing us to listen to. Last week in episode 264, show creator and every other episode host of Succotash, Mark Hershon, sat down with his longtime friend and former roommate, Mark Pitta, for our chats episode called Visiting Virtually with Mark Pitta. You can find that episode in the show archive at www.suckatashshow.com and through various soundcast listening services, such as Apple or Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Audible, and SoundCloud, just to name a few. What is your preferred listening platform? I'll take my answer off air. This week, I have a trio of clips for you from the soundcasts, Salty Language, a hot dog is a sandwich, and don't ask Tig. And of course, this episode contains a classic advertisement from our longtime fake sponsor, Henderson's Pants. Let's get to it. First up, Salty Language from Brian Stewart and Tony High. Now, Salty Language has been featured on Succotash uh, a few times in the past, certainly in the past 10 years, and currently Salty Language is now in their 10th year. So here's the description of the show. It says, we rant on a variety of topics ranging from comic books to movies. Whatever pops into our heads is fair game. Fair enough. The clip I've selected is from a recent show, uh, from August 4th, actually, 2021, in which it says, This week, Brian and Tony discuss life, hanging out, bad audio, 10 years of podcasting, Minecraft, non-alcoholic beers, Why the Last Man series, The Bad Batch, History of Wrestling Site, Fleets, a Swatum Galactus figure, S-U-A-T-T, S-U-A-T-M-M Galactus figure, our question of the week, and more. It actually says Q of the W, but I put that one together myself. Anyone wondering why the podcast is late, that's why, because I 100% did not feel like podcasting last night. <laughs> actually, by the yeah, time no we would have recorded, I probably would have been okay enough to do it, but I, you know, just didn't know, and I didn't want to all of a sudden be like, hey, you know, <laughs> or pull a stanky leg I mean, why take while the we're chance, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the old gravy leg. Yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't need another example of that on the show. <laughs> yeah, I mean that happened our first that was nine years ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Ten and a half or something. Yeah. Ten and a half. Nine and a half. I can't do math. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Nobody was asking you to. I guess. I don't That's know. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. I don't know, maybe. Next episode. All Tony doing math. Maybe, bro. No calculator. It's going to be the worst fucking episode <laughs> ever. Four no plus four. that shit. Four plus four. Gunshot. <laughs> yeah, 44. Magnum. Pow. <laughs> Dude, so my brother was over the other day, and uh, he yeah. was out looking for um, ammunition. He needed 45 ammunition, right? Right. So... One of the places he went to was like, well, we don't have any 45s, but I got 40s and 5s, meaning bullets, not like 40s and 9s. <laughs> you know, like they didn't have yeah, like right. malt liquor stocked to one side and just $5 bills everywhere. But it was, and he's like, what am I supposed to do with that? And I'm like, duh, you just mush them together. That makes 45s. Yeah. Like, You've used tape before, right? Yeah. <laughs> you just load a 40, then a 5, a 40, and a 5. It's like, like wow. Like, I don't know shit really about guns, but I, I know that's not going to work, you know? Like, I mean, how many times do you think that gun guys probably use that gag? Yeah, I also feel like that person shouldn't be allowed to be near firearms. Yeah. Because if they even remotely suggested that, even as a joke, they should have been slapped really hard. Or, no, Pistol not slapped. Whipped. Pistol whipped, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Let me teach you about gun yeah, safety. Slapped with a gun. <laughs> Let me teach about gun safety. <laughs> like, duck. Yeah. <laughs> Stop talking dumbass shit. 
<sighs> yeah. So that was that was amusing. That's exciting stuff. Yeah, I guess. Right. Apparently, it's in short supply right now. Yeah, I've heard. I, I work with a lot of gun guys, and uh, I hear ammo is incredibly hard to find right now. Yeah. He said he had to pay up yeah. a little bit to to finally get some. He said he didn't want to get a bunch. He just had none and wanted to have some in case he wanted to go shoot. So right. I guess he bought like two boxes right, or something. Because when COVID was first kicking off, I wanted to take uh, Logan to the range because it's fun. You yeah. know, you rent a, rent a gun, you get some rounds, you just lay down some fire down range. It's good times. Yeah. But it's, well, one, COVID shut all that down, but now ammo is so expensive. Yeah. And I'm like, mm. Well, everybody was, like, fearing, you know, they were going to have to shoot well, people for yeah, toilet paper. they thought the apocalypse yeah. is coming and shit. <laughs> yeah. And people are idiots. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there seems to be, a, like, you know, because of uh, so many shutdowns and labor and all that kind of stuff, there seems to be a shortage on pretty much everything right now. But not yeah, not enough that, like people should hoard but just enough that it's it's obviously it's made prices go up it's annoying is what it is yeah but you know what there's not a shortage of brian uh shitty audio from us <laughs> fucking ha-ha's my guy oh 10 years of ha-ha's oh. here at saltylanguage.com i'm i'm pretty sure i was accurate too <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about that there is 10 years of that if you want to go back and listen <laughs> That's true. Uh, like I said, we're not talking about that. Yeah. And most of the time, I think we do pretty well, but... Ten years of absolute hysterical laughter. Right. Of yeah. anal-busting laughter. <laughs> wait, You know, laughs are going to shit your pants. Okay, okay. I mean, yesterday, it probably wouldn't have been that hard, <laughs> but... <laughs> you're having one of those yeah, days. Been there. I feel, yeah. We've yeah. all been there. If yeah. you say you haven't been there, you're lying. Those are the worst days, right? Like, you know, there's people like, oh, I was, you know, talking about, like, oh, I laughed so hard I pissed myself. It's like, yeah, but think about, like, beyond the, like, you days where you can't trust a fart pe- oh, to, the, yeah. to the point that you're like, dude, I can't even watch anything funny because if I laugh, I may not be able to clinch. You yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're like, yeah, suddenly I got a real pulse the couch. <laughs> So you can reach the show on Twitter at Salty underscore language is capital S-A-L-T-Y underscore capital L-A-N-G-U-A-G-E. Uh, Tony High can be reached at All the Beers Pod on Twitter. And that is capital A-L-L capital T-H-E capital B-E-E-R-S capital P-O-D. And apparently it's a podcast that he also hosts. And Brian Stewart is not on Twitter. It does not appear. Uh, but he does co-host a... Sorry, I'm distracted. There's a fly in here. I wasn't sure. Maybe it was a bee. It's definitely a fly. Fairly innocuous. Uh, so anyway, he, uh, Brian Stewart apparently also co-hosts a podcast called The Crazy Life, which has a focus on mental health issues. And that is on Twitter at The Crazy Life Pod, which is capital T-H-E, capital C-R-A-Z-Y, capital L-I-F-E, capital P-O-D. I have a feeling I'm going to be checking out both of these shows in the future. And of course, they have saltylanguage.com. And that is S A L T Y L A N G U A G E dot com. Next up, a hot dog is a sandwich from Ramble. Its description says Mythical chefs Josh Scherer and Nicole Hendizada discuss, debate, and dissect the web's most hilariously controversial culinary quandaries. So they're called mythical chefs, not because they are mythical creatures who happen to be chefs, at least not in any literal sense. No. So uh, for those of you who don't know, there's a show on YouTube called. Uh, Good Mythical Morning, and is hosted by uh, Rhett and Link, who are longtime friends, and they have a big crew. I have uh, even podcaster Jordan Morris has been a writer there. I believe I've mentioned him on a previous episode, like not that long ago. At any rate, so that's why they're called Mythical Chefs. So there are people who watch the show that already know this, but for those of you who don't, these two have their own podcast. So the clip I've chosen is from a little bit earlier this year. It's from May 19th, which of course is Steely Dan Day. Uh, 2021, and it's called Can You Tell the Difference Between Coke and Pepsi? And its description says, Today, Josh and Nicole are doing a blind taste test to find out, can you really tell the difference between Coke and Pepsi? 
Meanwhile, a little history. So Pepsi okay. was started like seven years after Coke started, essentially. It seemed like they were kind of biting off the same – they were biting off the Coke wave. Does it have to do with like Pepsi or like like easing your tummy or something? It So all of these drinks back then, right? They were – these are just all medicines. Right? They're all yeah. tonics. I knew they were they were medicines, but I was yeah. just wondering like what sort of – like was it an analgesic? 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 How do I say that we word? We got to bleep anal and analgesic. <laughs> yeah, analgesic, a pain reliever. <laughs> 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 or like was it like an antidepressant was it like for stomach pain like what was it used for so it, it was just advertised as like generic like make you feel good drink but y- you hit it on the head with pepsi is short for pepsin which is <gasps> an enzyme in your stomach that helps reduce food however there was never any pepsin in it interesting so this dude uh what, what's the what's the what's the guy uh, what's the guy we we have the info caleb here. davis bradham <laughs> Bradham. Bradham. Caleb Davis Bradham. So he started this in 1893. Uh, Coke famously comes out in 1886. And by that time, there were a ton of different, you know, tonics, sodas mm-hmm. being sold. Like, I mean, Dr. Pepper, right? He's literally advertising himself as a doctor. And then John Pemberton <laughs> was an actual medical doctor who, who founded Coca-Cola. But oh, in, wow. come, in comes Caleb Davis Bradham, who has this drink that he's calling Brad's drink that was actually – it, there was no cola in it at the time. It was just sugar, water, caramel, lemon oil, nutmeg, and like some other natural flavorings. Interesting. But apparently there was never any pepsin in it, even though that's what he was sort of advertising on the name. But back then they were like, you couldn't advertise a soda without putting the name of a drug, illegal, or medical in it. Yeah, my question is, you know, uh, it looks like John Pemberton was a pharmacist. Mm-hmm. Now my question is, are these like the old-timey pharmacies that had like soda jerks and stuff like that? Or is that like af- before that time? I'm pretty sure they yeah, did. Like okay. all this stuff was sort of linked together. Like you'd yeah. go to the pharmacy to get your medical grade cocaine back get, in 1890. Yeah, your egg creams, kids. Come get your egg creams. Get your egg creams and cocaine down to the pharmacy. <laughs> so where you meet your best gal. So why, why do people say that there were coca leaves? There were in the were. in the original Coca Cola. Okay. Like that literally. So Coca Cola was a uh, an, basically a headache cure, right? It was an analgesic was. Okay. and um, stimulants cure headaches. Mm-hmm. So they used extract from the coca plant, which obviously cocaine is is based off of, and that is a stimulant. If I am remembering my sixth grade drug classifications correctly <laughs> that we learned about, Dare. <laughs> but what is a barbiturate? I have no a idea. A barbiturate? We learned about it I think in it's like a downer. I was like eleven years old. Yeah, barbiturates about, are downers. They're like right? people will offer you barbiturates. And I was <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, and the cola nut, which is it has natural caffeine in it, okay. um, from you know uh, uh, Africa, and uh, also has a really delightful flavor to it, but. <gasps> Coca Cola? Yeah, it's literally like. Oh did you never know God. that? Are you pulling my leg right now? No, I had no just... idea. I found out right now that Coca Plant Cola Nut Coca Cola. But you knew of those two things individually. You I never did. put it together. Yes, I of course I knew both of those things existed. I just had no idea that that's the name of the drink that contains those two. Because we just know Coca Cola is the thing that everyone drinks. Yeah, it's a all trademark. The time. It's, it's a, a trademark. trademark. I never thought of it as like having like a perp like the name having a purpose. Yeah, so that's what it was. So, they, <laughs> so they're so too stupid. Like if you think about Excedrin, right? The the headache reliever yeah. drug. It's literally just like some sort of pain reliever and then uh, caffeine in it. Wow. Because caffeine cures headaches, and so that's what all this stuff is. About. So Pepsi had added cola to the name in 1898, about a decade after Coca-Cola blew up. Okay. But the things that they left in there, he had lemon oil in that original drink. Mm. So if you look at the label on Coke and Pepsi, the only real difference is that Coke has phosphoric acid, Pepsi has phosphoric acid and citric acid. Interesting. So that's the acid that we taste. That, that yeah. So you say, yeah, you taste an extra lemony bite. Oh, my gosh. I, I This is the first time I've looked at the label. Like, yeah. Ever, but also to counter that acid in Coke, you have uh, you have high fructose corn syrup, yeah, and then Pepsi you have high fructose corn syrup and extra sugar added. Correct. Who knows how that actually plays out in taste? See, You're saying I told you I can taste that it's sweeter and I can taste that it's more acidic. But do you th- and I didn't even know that. Do you think most people can though? No, I'm special. <laughs> I'm the special one. I told you this already. You are special. You're very special. <laughs> I, the reason yeah. I really wanted to do this and to see if I could do it is because so many people, you'll ask them what the difference is, and they'll go like, Pepsi's f- less fizzy. And it's like, that all depends on the level of fizz at <laughs> yeah. the soda machine at the Cracker Barrel. That has nothing to do. They're all like, that's not a real thing. Yeah. Um, but that said, it could be the extra sugar that's making it be perceived as totally. that. So there are slight, slight differences. I don't think most people can taste them, but- do you want to do this thing? Right now? Do you want to do it right now? Uh, I don't know. Do you have a blindfold? 
What? Do you have a blindfold? I was going to have you close your eyes. I don't think we need oh, to. Oh, man. Wanna, what, what do you want I me to I wanted a blindfold. We have wanted... like a cactus over there. Do you want to hold that over your eyes? <laughs> just put them in my eyes. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, I can do it. Yeah, I can close my eyes. What we have here, Nicole's eyes are closed. I have three cups in front of me, and I have various amounts of Pepsi and Coca-Cola. I'm going to put two of one of the drinks into two of the cups and then one of the other drink. Nicole, I will shift them around. I will keep track of them in my mind, and you will taste them and tell me what your answer is. Okay, just so you know, we're surrounded by a lot of equipment, so just be careful and don't spill any liquids. Oh, anywhere. God. <laughs> Do not spill Hold any liquids. Hold on, Nicole. Liquids. I'm pouring, I'm pouring, I'm pouring. You can reach Josh Scherer on Twitter at Mythical Chef. That is capital M-Y-T-H I-C-A-L capital C-H-E-F. Now, Nicole Hendizida is on Twitter as Nicole, it looks like Enayati, I'm going to guess, but her... Twitter does reflect this other name, and it is capital N, capital H, E N D I Z A D E H. And you can find the show's website at rambleofficial.com, that is R A M B L E O F F I C I A L dot com forward slash hot dog, H O T T O G dot H T M L. Hmm. Haven't seen one of those in a while. But of course, the show could be found wherever podcasts can be found. I found them on Stitcher. Good day, mate. Bill Haywatt here. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere where it's winter and we're currently treading water in some areas and trying to dig our cars out from under 30 feet of snow in others, you may be unawares that in the bottom half of the world, it's the lazy, hazy, hot and moist days of summer, which is where you can find the new Down Under Pants from Henderson's Pants. If you suffer from getting a little too sweaty, South of the border? Or maybe you just need a little kangaroo inside your khakis? Down Underpants offers a common wealth of comfort just for you. Artfully crafted from koala skin and wombat fur, these light as a kiwi feather underpants slip on like a dream, offering solid protection from sweating and chafing all day long. In keeping with the way things work in the land of Oz, the yoke's on you as the vent to relieve oneself is on the other side from American boxers and briefs. So, whether you're out tossing the old boomerang around or putting another shrimp on the barbie, You'll be doing it all cool and comfy in your down underpants. Your down underpants. Your down under. Your down underpants. Yes. Originally designed for Crocodile Dundee, Mad Max, and penal colonists, Henderson's down underpants are available wherever water goes down the loo in the opposite direction. That's Henderson's, makers of long johns and short shorts since 1770. And now, back to Succotash. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, that's a wrap. You, you know, Joy, I have to say, I feel as if a small part of me just died. Shut up. Thank you, Bill Haywatt. Finally, don't ask Tig from American Public Media. Its description says, Need advice? Comedian Tig Notaro doesn't have all the answers, but that won't stop her from fielding your questions on life's many challenges. With the help of her friends and the occasional expert, Tig gives her best inexpert guidance on everything from lost love to giving yourself a haircut with toddler scissors. We're warning you now, don't ask Tig. Fair enough. The clip I've selected is from an episode from June 21st, 2021. And its description says, Need to perform a DIY exorcism to rid an inheritance of bad energy? It's very specific. Did someone from your past write an unflattering song about you in their first EP? <laughs> Tig and comedian actor Mike Birbiglia oh, have some answers to navigate these situations and more. Mike also explains why, quote, maybe quit, unquote, is a part of his advice to creatives inspiring to make it in Hollywood. Mike Birbiglia was recently interviewed in Succotash, so you can check the archives for that. Interviewed by Mark Hirshon. So here's a fun little segment for you. Well, Mike, you know, we, we've officially arrived at that part of the show where we try to solve my listeners' problems. As we start... It's important that you know, it's not even important, but I'm just going to let you know that the first question comes from Norway. Oh. All the way from Norway. No kidding. By a person who wishes to be called Norway. Okay. All right. Hello, Norway. No yeah, Norway writes, I have inherited a boonot, which is a national costume from my grandmother who passed away. I really want one of those. 
And man, they are pricey, about 6000 bucks. But here's the problem. My grandmother was kind of evil, and I haven't had any contact with her the last 15 years. What should I do about this national costume? I feel like it needs some sort of exorcism if I'm going to keep it. Did Norway receive the costume yet? It seems like it hasn't arrived yet, but that they know that they they are getting it. I think one one way to approach it would be to do something in the costume mm-hmm. that is the antithesis of what the grandmother would do that has a more oh. po- more positive spin and more positive mm-hmm. create a more positive energy with the costume. So like for example, uh if Norway couldn't stand the grandmother because uh she said mean things about Norway, let's say that Norway could wear the costume and go around for a day and give people compliments all day unsolicited. That's incredible. Do you know what a boonod is it boonod boonod <laughs> looks like? I, I don't. No, no. That would be the interesting thing. Is if yeah. it's really <laughs> funny looking or scary looking? Yes. Then Norway might, you know, be pulled off the public streets. Oh, that uh, could be. And yeah. that would be a whole other energy. That would be a whole other <laughs> But it would be Norway's own energy. Of course. It would make it very personal. I mean, we could do – do you know how to do an exorcism? No, but I, I feel like I could do a look at a how-to how YouTube video and get a sense of it. Well, what if you didn't have time and you just were going to do it right now on this podcast? What What do you think in your mind? Because I'm trying to think – could we do an exorcism for Norway? Okay. Uh, um, but I don't really know what exorcisms are like. So one way we could do it is that I could pay you a compliment. Uh-huh. Um, and then give it some kind of a sound effect to go with it. So it would have a little bit of a surreal quality to it. Okay. Okay, sure. L- <clears throat> like, 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 Tig, I respect you so much because I think you are brave what was that word <clears throat> brave <laughs> i stretched it out to give it an exercising quality okay um should i do one to sure. you yeah why not um mike i really appreciate you because i think you are tremendously thoughtful Gosh, I enjoyed that so much. <laughs> that hurt my throat. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> do you think we're helping Norway or just helping ourselves? Should we do no, no. one for Norway? For, for Norway, I would say, okay, um, Norway, I appreciate you because you're open to receiving help. Norway, I hope this helps. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Are, is that anything like an exorcism? I don't know. I was just trying to, for memories of movies yeah, with exorcisms, okay. trying to like, yeah, just dress it up a bit. That's a good podcast. <laughs> memories of exorcisms. <laughs> Norway. That's what Mike and I think you should do: is um, put on the outfit, go be positive, and if all else fails, you know, worst case scenario, go. Go sell that thing. Make some scratch. <laughs> Make some scratch. Yeah. Give, it to, give it to charity, no less. That'd but, be a good vibe. Give the cash. Yeah, I don't know. Like if you That's if you saying. donate that outfit, whatever yeah. it is, to charity, they might be like, thanks a lot. Um, Mike, don't go anywhere. We, we're just getting started, and we'll return with more questions after the break. Okay, and you can find Tig Notaro on Twitter at capital T-I-G, capital N-O-T-A-R-O. Mike Birbiglia can be found at all lowercase b-i-r-b-i-g-s and apparently the website is Tignation I like that That's all lowercase t-i-g-n-a-t-i-o-n dot com and that's all I have for you this week I hope you found some of it entertaining perhaps informative various degrees of interesting there's a lot of content out there and choosing what to listen to can be challenging at times 
finding time to listen to anything can also be challenging, so I'm especially grateful that you've chosen to spend this bit of time with me. By the way, I have a channel on YouTube under my name, Tyson Saner, and a show of sorts that features video gaming content from various genres throughout the years. Lately, I've been playing a lot of Minecraft. I've got some videos that are designed to lull you to sleep in a series called Minecraft ASMR, and so far they seem to be doing okay. Also on my channel, I've been recording my screen during a soundcast called Nooner Podcast that I have been interacting with for 10 years. I've been doing a live Tumblr every Tuesday night at 7.30 for a few years now. Feels like three to five years. There's a couple of videos up of what it looks like from my perspective, as well as show audio. The first one is just an extended excerpt, but the second one, and theoretically any subsequent installments, are the entire live show. I just thought I'd try something different, with the understanding that my workload during the week would increase somewhat. Oh well, right? I mean, why do we do any of this? I guess it's to have some additional sort of record of these moments in time for future generations, provided that the world is still here for them to look back on with any sort of fondness. Be sure to check out Epi 266 next week when Mark Hershon will return with who knows what for you to listen to. In the meantime, thank you for listening, be decent to each other, and if anyone asks if you have heard anything good lately, won't you please pass the Succotash? You've been listening to Succotash, the comedy soundcast soundcast, with your host, Tyson Saner, brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Rate us and review us at Apple and Google Podcasts. Find us on the web at SuccotashShow.com, on Spotify, on Stitcher, on iHeartRadio, on YouTube, on SoundCloud, and wherever fine soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Succotash Show. Like us on Facebook. Email us at tyson at succotashshow.com or call into the Succotash Skype line at our toll call number 818-921-7212. The number again is 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash you slash Succotash. Succotash is produced and engineered by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Saner. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Succotash is executive produced by Mark Hershon. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Succotash goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.